Today, on an all-new Dr. Phil, she moved in with him. From my waterfront condo in Florida to a shoebox in New York. But are they ready to tie the knot? She sold your BMW? I said I'm going to a class reunion, and I'm not going into hoopty. She almost ran me over taking the BMW. Fighting fiancé. I never made that promise. Please, tell the truth. Why are y'all even almost sort of kind of getting married? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Wait a second. Take I'm going to get you the help that you need. Be five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Do you ever feel like when you fall in love and marry one person, you then get them home and find out, whoa, this is not the deal I signed up for. You fall in love with Shamar Moore. But then you wake up next to Tyler Perry's Uncle Joe. Well, that's what Cheryl says happened when she decided to merge her life with her fiance, Owen. Owen is an optometrist who says he makes up to $500,000 a year. In the beginning, he wined and dined Cheryl, flying her on weekend trips to New York to visit. She was so head over heels in love that she gave up her oceanfront condo in Florida to merge her life with his. But when she landed in New York, she got a rude awakening. My fiance convinced me to move from my beautiful waterfront condo in Florida to a shoebox of an apartment in New York. We met in Florida. He was vacationing with some friends and kind of that little love at first sight thing. The long distance relationship in the beginning was great. We did see each other quite a bit. Owen would fly down quite often. He did fly me into New York every other weekend. I was very happy. He did talk to me about moving to New York with him and the kids. At that point, he had already asked me to marry him a thousand times. It did take a little convincing. I enjoy my Florida living, but since we were talking about marriage and our future, it seemed like the smart thing to do. He is an optometrist. He's making money, and he said everything would be fine. I was under the impression that when I moved to New York, we were going to find a bigger place. It didn't happen. I went from a California king-size bed to sleeping on a futon. This was not the rosy picture I was painted. I asked myself several times, what in the hell did I get into? I lived in New York for a year before I decided I can't take any more, I have to go. I'm currently living back in Florida in a not desirable neighborhood. So this is where I'm temporarily staying until I get back on my feet. I had a beautiful place. That was my place right there, fourth floor, the beautiful view looking over the canal. I gave up everything to be with Owen. And now I have nothing. Well, Owen says, not so fast. This bait and switch can work both ways, according to him. Because he says that as soon as she got there, they started fighting. Because she had no job, no money, and a ton of expectations. Take a look. When I met Cheryl, it was love at first sight. I was just captivated. I told Cheryl I wanted to marry her. She said yes. But... Currently, my relationship with Cheryl is a little on the rocks. Cheryl expects me to pay for everything. Cheryl was having a very difficult time managing her finances in Florida. She was back and forth with courts and about to lose her place. When Cheryl and I made the decision to have her move to New York, it was a no-brainer. She was going to be homeless anyway. After she moved to New York, our communication issue became apparent. The argument started. Cheryl did start to become resentful because the fact that I financially couldn't give her the things that she wanted. She wanted to move, but like I told her from the beginning, as well as when she was here, it wasn't financially feasible. Sleeping in the futon in the living room caused 
many arguments. My neck, my back, my this, my that. I couldn't take it. And I said, hon, maybe we should buy a bed and put it in the living room. I think I shouldn't have said that because that caused a gigantic argument. Before she moved, no promises were made. I love this woman like no other. And many times I feel no matter what I do, it's just not good enough. Okay, w when you came out, you were going, uh-uh, uh-uh-uh. W what's your uh-uh, uh-uh-uh about? <laughs> I was calm in the back, and then <laughs> I saw her preliminary video, and I was like, no, it can't be. Come on. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it honest. That's not how it was. Uh, well, so how was it? Financially, like he stated, it was better for me to move to New York for financial reasons, to save money, to get prepared for the wedding. But you had a job, right? Did I have a job? In Florida? Yes, I did. And you had a place? I had a place. And then you moved to New York. Did you think she would have a job when she moved to New York, or she was going to have to find one? No, she already, she already had a job set up. Set up? The job promised us 60000 So it was a no-brainer on her part. That, that actually was the kicker that made her decide to come to New York. You told me, hon, oh, this is a no-brainer. You, you come to New York, and you can work in my office, and I will pay you what you're making in Florida. She actually gave us a list of what she says are your lies. She said, you agreed to pay Cheryl to work in his optometry office, then said, well, I can't afford to pay that. Would get a bigger place after Cheryl moved to New York, then said, mm, no money. Told family Cheryl's living a good life in New York, and they didn't know Cheryl was sleeping on a futon. Told friends Cheryl stole his BMW. Told cousin that Cheryl stole 20 grand from him. So those, that's a list of lies you said. This is just the beginning. There were others, but you said those were the big ones. Did you do that? Can, can, you, can you read each one again? And then yes, oh, I'd be happy to. Please. Agreed to pay Cheryl to work in his optometry office, then said couldn't afford to pay. I never made that promise, and that was you a... You never made that promise? I never made... Excuse ma me, ladies and gentlemen, the Oscar for the best liar goes to Owen. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Phil, I'm a numbers cruncher, okay? I know my business in and out. I knew that there is no way that my optometry practice could support her salary. First of all, her, her coming to New York wasn't because of the promise of working at the practice. You understand what I'm saying? Like I said, she, she, she came to New York because when we were talking, she said, this job is guaranteeing me $60,000. It it's, no it, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. It's three times what you're making in Florida. So I said, hon, of course come. You know what I'm saying? It's a no-brainer. But the thing is, we were back and forth deliberating. Do I go to Florida? Does she come to New York? And I told her, the, the, the only thing that stopped me from going to Florida we is, never, is, is, we, is... Wait, 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 hold on. You could not come to Florida. Right, but that's what I'm about, I'm about to tell them. I could we not come to Florida. Why? That was not in the conversation Why in the I couldn't come to Florida? Why always just Why me coming come to, to Florida? Okay, it's because in optometry school, we have three national boards that we have to take. Florida has their own version of those three. It's a no-brainer. I'm not going to go down there and retake those three tests. I'm 14 years out of school. I'm not going to go back and study to do that just to be in Florida. You know what I'm saying? So that was the main thing that made us decide, I, I cannot go to Florida. You so keep pushing your glasses up. You should get those to fit. <laughs> I know you want to get me on that. I know you want to get me on that. No, I'm, I'm just saying. No, 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 no. No, you know, you know, that'd be like me sitting up here with a tick and no, I don't do anything no, no. about it. No, you know what it is? It, it, because because when, they, when they did the taping at the house, they kept, they kept on me saying, Doc, keep your glasses up because of the reflection. So I keep doing it just to make you look good, make yeah. us all look good. Well, but anyway, it's working um, so far. Um, <laughs> you said you would get a bigger place after Cheryl moved to New York and then you said no money. No? Okay. Is, wait, is that wait, true or false? False. When you didn't false? say you were going to get a bigger that's place? False? Wait, 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 can, wait. Can I, can that, I, wait, can I, wait, I'm going to explain. Well, but you one can't filibuster. You have to answer the question. Okay. You're just going on and on exactly. and on. Exactly. All right, when, okay. When it, I was it, there, it, when I now was... Now you're both going on and on and on. <laughs> okay. Did it, you it, tell her you were going to get a bigger place? I said, eventually we will get a bigger place. Let's come to New York. Let's solidify. And then let's merge our forces. And then we can get a bigger place. Is that what he said? No. All right. Cheryl says Owen's family is constantly accusing her of being a gold digger, even though she says there's no gold to be dug. 
But Owen says that he is even starting to question Cheryl's intentions towards his finances. We're going to find out why. We'll come back. Cheryl pawned the engagement ring that I gave her in order to fund her way back to Florida and continue her life. You just don't even understand what that ring means. I was so betrayed, so violated. I couldn't believe it. And later... If you want to set it straight, let's set it straight, okay? If you want to get real with it, let's get real with it. And you want to say that I'm this gold digger or whatever, like I said, that was no financial... I would never call you a gold digger. I said everybody else said you are. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, a violent past. Charlie was 13 when he killed his mother. Hidden from his wife. Shouldn't you have said there's something you need to know about him? You didn't tell. How did you decide that? With horrific consequences. This gets worse. He killed his wife and niece. He said the best way to get revenge is to cut out their heart. We're talking about a serial killer here. That's tomorrow. Owen's family has said to Owen that he was crazy for putting up with me. They told him, Owen, you are insane. You continue to be with her. It's like you're insane. My family thinks nothing highly of Cheryl. My mother doesn't want me with her. My brother for sure doesn't want me with her. And neither does my uncle nor cousin. Well, despite Owen's family not approving of his bride-to-be, Owen and Cheryl were still moving on with their wedding plans until they hit a major roadblock. Take a look. We had agreed to have the wedding in Florida. I said, you and I can go down to the city hall and get married and call it a day. But she said, no, it's not going to happen that way. I pictured Owen and I to have a very beautiful wedding. We were going to have a beach wedding. I said, OK. You want the big wedding? Let's do it. If that's what you want, then let's do it. I had already picked out a couple of wedding dresses that I was interested in. I wouldn't totally rule this one out. We had already reached out to a wedding coordinator. I had already looked at venues. We had already taken our engagement photos. I said, "Hun, how are we funding this? She said, it's on you. I said, it's on me. I tried to give Cheryl a budget of Five to seven thousand, she said. Fifteen thousand. Said no, hun. We have a problem here. So I stopped planning for the wedding. I overheard her saying, "No, there's not going to be a wedding in October because of financial issues." Calling off the wedding was her idea. When I heard the wedding was called off, it didn't really bother me. I was like, "Okay, if that's what you want, then that's what you want." Okay. Did you call off the wedding? I did, but... Or is this the wedding ring? The, the engagement ring? If you're, Why are you wearing it if you called off the wedding? Because he asked me to put it back on in February. It looks like he did a pretty nice job. Yes, he did. That was the uh, only thing he spent money on. 6000 uh, baby. Did you tell your family she stole twenty grand? No. You didn't? You nope. did not? No. You did not tell your cousin that I nope. stole... Did he tell you that you were the reason that there were no toys at Christmas? Yes. So he did tell you that? Yes, he did tell me that. So, But you didn't tell your family she stole 20 grand? Not at all. Did you but, tell her that she was the reason that there were no toys for Christmas? No. My best friend said to me, he said, Owen, from since you've met Cheryl, how much do you think you've spent? I said, easy, 20,000, easy. So he said, he said, wow. So now maybe my cousin might have heard the story as, that, that I'm telling my buddy, and that's where the 20,000 popped up. How your cousin hear the story when she but, doesn't even communicate with this guy? She does not even know his phone number. They don't even communicate. Okay. So how would she even know that if it did not come from you? If I'm tell the truth for once. Please, tell the truth. Did you not say that I stole money from you? You, I said you stole That's money from me. That's why your family does I, not like me, because uh, you continue to tell these stories about me. Did you tell me. them she stole your BMW? Yeah, she did. After a barbecue, 
she almost ran me over taking the BMW. Of course I said that. <laughs> Dr. Okay. Phil, I'm going to be honest with you. When I said something, I said something. Okay. So I, I, I told, I told so them that they stole. So she stole the BMW, but not the 20 grand. No, she didn't steal 20,000. She stole an envelope with $1,300 in it, which was my rent money, when she packed up and left. And my, so and, and let my... me ask you a question, <clears throat> Dr. Phil, if I may. Who steals someone's... Now, keep in mind, I work for him. I work in his office. I'm his office manager. Who steals someone's car and then comes to work Monday morning early before the office even opens and opens the office? But I stole the BMW, but I come to work. In the BMW? In the BMW <laughs> that I stole. With your 1300 bucks? With my $20,000. Dr. Phil, it was a barbecue. Going to the barbecue, we decided we're going to drive two cars. I have a hoopty, a beat up car, and my BMW, which is my baby. Okay? I said, I said, hon, I said, I'll drive the hoopty to the barbecue. You drive the BMW. But understand that after the barbecue, I'm going to need the BMW because I'm going to a, to a, to a 20 year class reunion and I'm not going in the hoopty. <laughs> okay? So now she said, she said, one of my, my, my buddies is talking to me. She, he's calling me. I, he said, she said, go talk to. Your buddy, I'm not going anywhere. I go talk to him, I turn around, she's starting the call. So now, sucker. So now, <laughs> I, 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 hey, go talk to your buddy, right, I'll be so right now, here. Now, <laughs> now, so the call almost hit me. So then, so then now, all my buddies are standing there watching me, like, and I'm like, this, I can't believe this woman took my call. That's what I said. And, and then we called her the Saturday, the Sunday. You never called so me the whole So did you go to weekend. your 20 year class reunion in the hoopty? No. Not you did? Not me. You say, I'm not rolling up in that thing. Right, right. right. But you, you that... skipped the 20 year reunion. You have to wait another 20 years. Okay, but well, that's fine. That's fine. But, but understand, understand. The BMW will be your hoopty by then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Money, money, money. We have accusations of a stolen BMW and $20,000. It has gone down the tube. Cheryl gives her list of their biggest fights over the almighty dollar when we come back. I'm under a lot of stress at this point. I asked Owen for $50 for me to go to the doctor. You would have thought I just asked this guy to finance a car. He just went ballistic over $50. And later, why are y'all even almost sort of kind of maybe getting married? <laughs> Is this my cue to run? I would always tell Owen, you are so blinded by things. Your children manipulate you. Your co-workers manipulate you. You are the only blind optometrist that I've ever known. I agree. I agree. Yeah, that was Cheryl talking about how her fiancé, Owen, who ironically is an eye doctor, is blind when it comes to life, marriage, how to treat a woman. Now, their biggest dilemma seems to be over the almighty dollar. Take a look. When I was in New York, Owen never gave me money for anything, for shopping, to get my hair done. I didn't even have winter shoes. He didn't even buy me a pair of boots. She was coming to me more and more for money. She suggested, "Hun, why don't I come and work at the office with you? I let her come. I was paying her $300 a week but it just still wasn't enough. That's not even minimum wage. What am I supposed to do with that? I'm under a lot of stress at this point, so now I'm having to go to the doctor on a weekly basis. So I asked Owen for $50 for me to go to the doctor. You would have thought I just asked this guy to finance a car. He just went ballistic over $50. Owen would say that I am financially irresponsible because he would ask me, what are you doing with your money? And I'm like, you know what you pay me. You're a doctor. It's not hard to figure out. He has lied about me several times. He told people that I stole over $20,000 from him, and that is complete 
the whole stealing thing happened because Cheryl wanted an advance on her check, so she stole $1,300 envelope with my rent money inside. I told her on the phone, you took my rent money, which has $1,300 in it, and I am going to dig into your bra and take my $1,300 back, and I'm going to rip my $6,000 engagement ring off of your finger. What about digging in her bra? What in... <laughs> Is that where your $1,300 was? <laughs> it's just an analogy that I oh, made. Oh, it's just an analogy. Yeah, yeah, that I made my wow. friends. I mean, at that point, <clears throat> it wasn't much going on. I would have liked that. Yeah. Um, are, are you resenting the fact that she's costing you money? I, I mean, I, I don't resent the fact, because, I mean... I, I don't really worry about money. I, I need to make you it... You don't worry about no, money? Wait, 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 hold on. Let, let me explain. Let me explain. Like I tell everybody, I have a 95% income to obligation ratio. So I need to make money to fulfill my obligations. Once I make my money and my obligations are fulfilled, I don't worry about anything after that. You know what I'm saying? That's but it. you got I, bills to pay. Of course. When we rekindled our love in 2012, I was, I had a lot of bills paid off, but then what ended up happening? So many disasters were happening in Florida. So money was just going down, going down. So it's, it's, it's coming from, from my account, it's coming from my, from my, um, from my, from my credit card. 4,000 went down in Florida. You want a working wife? Yes, I mean, I want, right, no. I want a working wife that's gonna be financially responsible. I mean, her, her, my, my problem with her is the and fact I want, that- I want a loving, supporting husband is what I want. Of course, I will give her a loving, and supporting husband, Dr. Phil, but understand, from her job in Florida, just got a paycheck on Thursday, Friday morning, she's broke. She's broke on Friday morning. I swear to you, Dr. Phil, I mean, uh, uh, we're gonna be honest, we're gonna keep it frank, we're gonna keep it real. Absolutely. Okay? So you okay, wanna say... So Friday morning she's broke. So, so now I have to be in New York knowing my woman has to get to work on Friday, her, 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 her gas tank is on E, she's worried about how she's gonna get there, she's scrambling for change to, 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 to do it, Saturday and Sunday, and she's flying out to your show Monday with no money in her pocket. But in the meantime, did I ask you for anything? So if you want to set it straight, let's set it straight, okay? If you want to get real with it, let's get real with it. And you want to say that I'm this gold digger or whatever? Like I said, there I was no financial... I didn't that, call you a gold digger. Me. Wait a minute. Everybody when else said I, I never said New that York. to you because I love you. I wouldn't say that to you. Right. I would never call you a gold digger. I said okay. everybody else said you are. I didn't spend money on me. It was on your kids. Dr. Phil... I'm asking you for money for your kids. I'm asking you for money to put food on the table to go to the groceries to feed your kids. The little money that you gave me, I'm going to the store to buy pots, pans, and stuff to feed your children. I get $60 from you, and I'm going and buying your daughter a new dress so she can look cute for her first little Valentine dance. So you want to talk about money and being a gold digger, me asking for money? I never asked for anything for me. It was all about the kids and about the house. Tell that. Tell that. Gold diggers don't ask for that for your kids. All right. Speaking of children, Cheryl says Owen's children, who are ages 11, 8, and 7, have put her through hell. We're going to find out what happened that left Cheryl ducking and weaving and trying to defend herself against his youngest son. We'll talk about that when we come back. I would describe Owen's youngest son as being Chucky. He's screaming, I'm gonna bring the wrath on you. Okay, little boy, if you wanna bring the wrath on me, bring it. And later, she had tons of ultimatums in order for us to get married, but it's fine. I jumped through the hoops, I jumped through all of them, I'll keep jumping through them because I love this woman. Anyway, go ahead. Dr. <laughs> Th thank you. Cheryl and myself did get into a physical altercation after Thanksgiving. She punched me in the back of my head and she kicked me in my back. Those stairs right there, and I stumbled down the stairs. I did not kick Owen down the steps. 
I took my foot and I pushed him in his back. So he missed like two steps. When someone kicks you down the steps, you fall, you tumble, and you roll. None of that happened. Well, Cheryl says in the short time she lived with her fiance, Owen, she was hit, kicked, spit on, and cursed out by his youngest son, who she did compare to Chucky from the movie Child's Play, while Owen did nothing but make excuses for it. Listen to this, and then we'll hear from Owen. When I first got to New York, Owen's kids treated me like I would describe Owen's youngest son as being Chucky. <laughs> The six-year-old hit me with a closed fist. He has called me everything imaginable. Fat bitch, stupid bitch, we hate you, you stupid All of this is from a six-year-old. Within two weeks of my arrival, I'm laying here asleep one morning, 6 a.m. He comes into the living room area and he goes to get a movie. And I tell him, no, it's too early in the morning. You're not going to watch a movie. So he's screaming, I want to watch a movie. And I'm like, no, you stupid bitch. I told him, go to your room. No, leave me alone. I'm going to bring the wrath on you. Okay, little boy, if you want to bring the wrath on me, bring it. So he takes the remote and throws it and breaks the flat screen TV. Owen did not punish his son. Instead, he blamed me. Why did you tell him no? Like, what do you mean, why did I tell him no? It's 6 in the morning. Okay, your six-year-old should be talking like that to any adult. Is that happening? In the beginning, with his emotional disturbance diagnosis and him being so attached to his father, yeah, he, he, he was. But that was, it, it started during a, the disaster of Sandy, you know, right. when, when I had to go to work and she was watching did them. Did you consequate that behavior if he did that sort of thing, if he disrespected her or any other adult? Did you intervene? Of course. He always had an excuse for it. No. Always had an excuse. Is he hitting her and spitting on her and calling her names, to your knowledge? When I came home that day, she, she told me that, 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 that he hit her and kicked her and things of that sort. And I was like, wow, I reprimanded him. I reprimanded him. You know, her, her, her problem with the situation was the fact that he broke the TV, my TV, and I went out to buy another one in a week. So, yeah, I brought, I brought another TV. That's fine. I mean, that's my prerogative, isn't it? But the thing is, so I reprimanded him my with son. with a new TV after he broke the TV? No, because when I brought the TV into the house, I told him, that's my TV, don't break it again, you can't watch it. So I continued with her, with her punishment, where she told me he couldn't watch TV. He was on punishment for, for, I think, two months. And to me, that was a little harsh, but it is what it is, because yeah. like she says, do not show division. And I did not show division. Can, can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Why are y'all even almost sort of, kind of, maybe getting married <laughs> is this is this my cue to run owen and cheryl are currently separated and living in two different states will they be able to today on an all-new dr phil she moved in with him from my waterfront condo in florida to a shoebox in new york but are they ready to tie the knot she sold your bmw i said i'm going to a class reunion and i'm not going into hoopty she almost ran me over taking the bmw fighting fiance i never made that promise please tell the truth why are y'all even almost sort of kind of getting married let's do it I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you, take I'm going to get you the help that you need. Three, five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Do you ever feel like when you fall in love and marry one person, you then get them home and find out, whoa, <laughs> this is not the deal I signed up for? You fall in love with Shamar Moore. <laughs> but then you wake up next to Tyler Perry's Uncle Joe. <laughs> well, that's what Cheryl says happened when she decided to merge her life with her fiance, Owen. Owen is an optometrist who says 
he makes up to $500,000 a year. In the beginning, he wined and dined Cheryl, flying her on weekend trips to New York to visit. She was so head over heels in love that she gave up her oceanfront condo in Florida to merge her life with his. But when she landed in New York, she got a rude awakening. My fiance convinced me to move from my beautiful waterfront condo in Florida to a shoebox of an apartment in New York. We met in Florida. He was vacationing with some friends and kind of that little love at first sight thing. The long distance relationship in the beginning was great. We did see each other quite a bit. Owen would fly down quite often. He did fly me into New York every other weekend. I was very happy. He did talk to me about moving to New York with him and the kids. At that point, he had already asked me to marry him a thousand times. It did take a little convincing. I enjoy my Florida living, but since we were talking about marriage and our future, it seemed like the smart thing to do. He is an optometrist. He's making money, and he said everything would be fine. I was under the impression that when I moved to New York, we were going to find a bigger place. It didn't happen. I went from a California king-size bed to sleeping on a futon. This was not the rosy picture I was painted. I asked myself several times, what in the hell did I get into? I lived in New York for a year before I decided I can't take any more, I have to go. I'm currently living back in Florida in a not desirable neighborhood. So this is where I'm temporarily staying until I get back on my feet. I had a beautiful place. That was my place right there, fourth floor, the beautiful view looking over the canal. I gave up everything to be with Owen. And now 